So that's it for the removal methods. There are other ways of keying or grading out markers as opposed to painting them out, but in my experience those techniques are often reliant on a specific set of factors. They work better if the markers are close to the colour of the screen, or if the markers are only visible in a single channel. We don't have that situation here so I can't demonstrate it, but still they would not be my preferred solution, even if those factors were met, because it's very difficult to get a high quality result. The best circumstance to resort to a method such as grading the markers out is if a foreground object is intersecting the marker and, and it's going to be really difficult to bring back that foreground object after you paint out the marker with a patch or something. Best example of that would be here. Let's say there's an actress in front of this marker here and she has a lot of soft hair that's intersecting with this marker. If we paint out the patch it's going to be difficult to bring that hair back without bringing a lot of the marker back with it. Hair is generally so fine that it's going to be semi-transparent, so it's actually going to take on the color of the marker itself. In this situation, it can be better to try and grade it out. So for now, let's remove the last two markers here. So looking at these markers, let's think about all the methods we have at our disposal now and go through them one by one and see if we can figure out what method's going to give us the quickest and the best result. And those are the sort of questions you should always ask when you're given a new shot. So let's do that now. So our first method was the IBK method. Now this method could be problematic. Because creating a clean plate with an IBK, you often get a lot of artifacts, especially in areas of heavy motion blur. And this green screen is quite uneven, which is adding to the problem. If we were going down this route, we would need to get a better clean plate. And we could definitely get a better one than this one that we have here. But that's going to take too long, so let's say that this method is not going to be the best and move on. So our second method was the roto offset method, and I think this method will definitely work. Um, he's going over the marker, but we can just source from the left of him over here, and I think that'll work fine. Um, and because it's a live method, uh, that'll be useful because it means we won't have to grade the patch. Uh, it's going to capture all that lighting changes that occur over the shot. Uh, so I think this method will actually work really well, uh, but for thoroughness sake, let's go through the other methods as well. The live paint method will also work. It will involve some manual painting. We're also limited to the areas we can clone from. Um, so we can really just clone from this area here. And as we've seen, the green screen is quite uneven, so if we paint from here, it probably means our patch is going to be brighter than the surrounding pixels, but we could easily fix that with a quick grade node. The frame hold methods, since they're non-procedural, they're probably going to be the most reliable methods we've discussed. There are very few situations where they will not work, and they'll often be your only real choice. However, as I've said, it can be very time-consuming and challenging matching a static patch to what the plate's doing in terms of lighting and motion blur and things like that. In this case, procedural methods will work without issue. We've already used them. And in this case, they're faster and they're going to give a more accurate result. So let's stick with a live method. The blur on Primalt edge extend method is likely to be problematic as well on account of Iron Man passing over the markers. So if we draw a shape here, we can see that it's blurring these pixels over when his hand gets too close. And you can see it here again. So let's forget about this method. This method where we pull the key for the markers is not going to work, mainly because it relies on us being able to isolate just the tracking markers with a key, which is going to be just about impossible because our tracking markers are virtually the same color as our foreground subject. So let's forget about this one too. 
So I think the best two methods are the live paint or the roto clone offset method. And let's go with the roto clone offset because it doesn't require any manual painting. So this time, let's hook the roto shape directly up into the B string. Let's go to a frame where we can see both markers. Like this one. And let's just deal with them one at a time. Let's split off the B stream and hook up the BG1 pipe to it. Let's change the source to background 1. And then let's offset it by 70 pixels in X. And then let's create a new shape, and for this one, We'll set it to background 2, so we have the ability to grade them separately. And now we'll just go through the same process as we've done before, tracking the markers and linking up the shapes to them. We don't need to worry about tracking these markers separately uh, because they're pretty much, uh, they're close enough that their movement is, is very similar. Um, so we'll just track one of the markers and we'll apply the tracking data to the root in the roto node. So as we've done before, we're going to look at the stabilized and if there are any adjustments we need to make to the roto shapes, we'll make those. And uh, after that, we'll do some grading. So for whenever um, our foreground object is intersecting the markers, let's go ahead and deactivate the shape for those frames. Now 
Now for those few frames where Iron Man's edges are being eroded around his hands. There's a few ways we can fix this. Previously we have uh, stenciled out our patches. Um, this time let's create a chemix node and we'll just mix in the original plate. And we're just going to do that using a paint node. So as we've done before, we're going to be painting back his edges. Um, the difference being this time we are bringing back the original plate as opposed to stenciling out areas of our patches. And I'll generally have this sort of set up uh, towards the end of my script. So down the B pipe there'll be all the paint being fed into it and then at the end I'll have sort of a dedicated area for bringing back uh, the original plate. And the alpha that's bringing back the original plate will consist of paint nodes, roto shapes, and in some circumstances uh, some keys as well. So we're missing an alpha for these patches. To get that we first need to shuffle in a full alpha. And then we need to pre-molt the alpha in the roto node. And now let's combine that with our master alpha. So here we have bought back the original plate here. So what do we do here with respect to our master alpha? Do we include this? The answer is no, because what this alpha here represents is everything that we're changing about the plate. Um, here where we've, we've actually undone some of our paint to bring back the original paint, uh, the original plate, sorry. Uh, so we need to represent that by stenciling this alpha out by by this alpha here. Cool, now we'll just quickly deal with this last marker here.
and there we have it we've removed all the markers and we have our master alpha of everything we've done so this this basically shows us how much of the plate we're going to be affecting so let's move on to the next stage of the shot which is fixing Iron Man's edges where the markers are showing through. In order to do this, we're going to need to a clean plate of the green screen, and we'll make a new custom one for that. We're also going to need to do a little bit of roto, and I'm going to show you a few different ways of fixing edges. Because as you're going to see, and as we've already spoken about, the suitability of a particular method is going to vary from shot to shot, and even from frame to frame. So let's start creating our clean plate. We're going to use another IBK color, but this time let's play with these dark values a bit. What we're looking to do here is just nudge these values here. I don't think it matters which one you pick, let's just pick the red and let's start nudging it up. And what you'll see here is at a certain point it's basically going to go nuts. And we want to find a balance, we want to try get rid of as much of his edge pixels as possible. And I think 0.05 looks pretty good. It's okay if we lose these pixels up here because there's no markers up there anyway. So let's put a big erode on it because there's some areas of quite heavy motion blur and we want to try and get as many of those pixels as possible. Next, let's chuck a large edge blur on this of, say, 50 pixels. And then let's unpremelt it. So as you can see, we're getting some artifacts here. And the reason for that is because our alpha channel and our RGB are not in sync. So what I mean by that is, if you switch between the two, as you can see, our RGB here has quite a hard edge. And in our alpha channel, we have quite an eroded feathered edge. So we need to create a new alpha channel that matches our RGB. So we're going to do that by shuffling the green channel into the alpha channel. And then we're going to do our clamp trick. And now if we copy that in, we can see the artifacts have gone. Let's also add a blur on top of that just to smooth it out. So that looks pretty good for now. It might have some problems down the line, but uh, we can deal with those as we encounter them. Cool, let's start fixing some of these edges. And let's start with this one here. So for the edge fix technique that I'm going to show you, what we need is an accurate roto of the edges that the markers are intersecting. So let's create a roto node, and let's set it to single frame, because these shapes are only going to need to last one frame. And let's draw a shape. And it's really important, we, we want to try and find the hard or opaque edge and follow that. Sometimes it can be quite hard to see, but just do it as best you can and you can always adjust the shape later on. Sometimes exposing up and down can help you see it more clearly. Now let's copy the alpha over to our plate and pre-mult it. Now we want to make a paint node above the copy node and set the output to just the RGB. And now looking at the pre-mult node, we just want to use the smear tool and just smear outwards from the hard edge. We're basically smearing that color information 
outwards and removing the marker in the process. We want to not just remove the marker tool, we also want to, we want an edge fixed area around the marker as a sort of buffer. And now we want to merge this over our clean plate. So we get this result. And this is what we're going to be key mixing back over our painted plate. So let's make a key mix. Hook a paint node up to the mask input. And we're just going to gently paint the marker out. Now let's jump over here and fix this edge here. And looking at the clean plate, I think we're going to encounter a problem here. So let's quickly just do the same as we did to the other edge. So as you can see, because the green screen is so poorly lit with these light and dark values, and just the way that the IPK color has been set up, we're getting a result here that's making these values on our clean plate quite a bit darker than the corresponding pixels of our original plate. And the result is not very desirable. So let's make a quick little setup that's going to allow us to override the clean plate with our own paint. So let's hook up a paint node to our plate and set the output mask to alpha. And then we're going to key mix this into our clean plate by its own alpha. So let's make a key mix node. And we want to make sure again that this alpha is solid. So let's grade the white point and blur it a bit. And then let's hook that up to the mask of our Keymix node. So now that we have this little setup, let's override this section of the clean plate with our own paint just by smearing these color values across. So now that we've painted up our first edges, let's do a few more using this method. Actually, before we do that, now that, we've, now that we're happy with our marker removal work, it might be a good idea to pre-comp this out uh, so that Nuke isn't having to constantly calculate 
all of these nodes while we're working on this edge fixing. When you are working on your Nuke script, it starts to really slow down significantly. Pre-comping is definitely one of the best uh, like things you can do to sort of mitigate that. One thing I find useful when I'm trying to do accurate roto to motion blur is to change the selection mode to feather points. And then you can select all the points and you can rotate them and you can control click on the corner points and kind of skew them. It can often be a much faster way of working than pulling individual points, um, especially if you have a really detailed shape. 